Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the episode of This Is My Offer. My name is Ajit Kole. I'm the worldwide partner leader for the automotive segment within AWS. With me, we have a distinguished kid, Rodolfo. Could you please introduce yourself? Ajit, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Rodolfo Dominguez, and I lead the auto tech practice here at Deloitte Consulting. It's great to have you here. The future of shared mobility has been evolving and given all the macroeconomic changes and shift in consumer preferences, can you share some patterns that Deloitte is seeing on one end? How are these consumer experiences having an impact on the profitability pools for the original equipment manufacturers? Absolutely. Happy to do that. And we have a number of studies. Uh, we follow this very closely. So basically, let's start by talking a little bit about the unprecedented amount of transformation and change that the global automotive industry is undergoing. Uh, we can start with the societal uh, changes, geopolitical tensions, uh, the eco ecologic imperatives that we face uh, as citizens of this planet, of course, and then very importantly, the enablement that technology is bringing to life. Uh, with this, what we see is um, especially for younger generations of consumers, the whole notion of car and vehicle ownership is less important than the older consumers for a number of reasons. Uh, urbanization and availability of mass public transportation uh, increasingly mm -hmm. uh, calls into question, do I ever need to own, own a car? Uh, we have obviously an affordability issue as well happening right now in terms of housing and, and vehicles. These are very large purchases, interest rates are high. But more importantly, I think what we are seeing is over the next decade, a shift towards more usage-based models um, for, for transportation needs. And so with that, I think that, what we are inviting our clients to think about is what capabilities do they need to develop, acquire through either partnerships, ecosystems, or their own uh, you know, capability building uh, in-house to, to cater to the needs, the, the ever-changing needs and wants of customers, uh, right? Not only in terms of transacting digitally, conveniently, flexibly, uh, in terms that, that they are comfortable with, uh, but more importantly, how do they not become just a hardware provider right? And so that other players may monetize uh, a lot of these, you know, bundled services that go around vehicle ownership and utilization together. So. Uh, super important. So that at the end needs that the investment agendas uh, are, are well thought through. Of course, product and technology leadership, especially in terms of safety, convenience, uh, you know, will continue to be critically important. Probably the number one agenda topic for, for the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. That said, uh, beyond the asset manufacturing and selling, the, the bundled uh, services that come with utilization of the vehicle, the profit pool potential that we see there, and also to have a holistic customer experience, that requires certain capabilities. And so they have to make very, very careful choices in terms of how they invest money, especially around their, their captive auto finance and mobility offerings. Yep. No, that's great to hear. And uh... As these consumer preferences are changing, I'm, I'll tell you, I've got two kids going to college and I can totally envision them not having a car. So completely resonates in the market from a personal experience perspective. But can we dive a little bit deeper on these changing consumer uh, preferences and how did you align your solution and offering aligned to that? Yeah, I know, uh, absolutely. And I can relate to that having, uh, you know, also some, some uh, driving age kids myself, half of which care to own a vehicle, half of which don't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can tell you that uh, one of the important drivers is the, the overall experience, right? We have become used to uh, the convenience uh, and, the, and basically the personalization of having our own smartphones and transact uh, in many areas that are key to daily life in that way. And while of course uh, a vehicle still requires, you know, some degree of physical interaction. You know, our consumer studies clearly indicate that customers still want to go and test drive the vehicle before they make the decision. But all the before and after mm -hmm. uh, part of the customer journey, largely folks are preferring to transact digitally, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on their own time, their own terms and with flexibility. 
The other important thing is building on what we said earlier um, regarding the decreasing interest in, in ownership as a whole and this long-term financial commitments and getting into debt, right? It's, it's a pretty gnarly concept. And coupled with perhaps some of the experiences that still need to evolve, you know, when a customer sets foot on a dealership, they are still dreading spending the hours, you know, these negotiations back and forth versus something that is a little bit more streamlined, more transparent. That at the end, they want to pay, uh, you know, $600 or less per month for a vehicle, including all of the services that come with that. Mm -hmm. The reality of the market uh, is that we are not right now at 734 bucks uh, on average in the US. And so these are very big disconnects between the reality of the experience and the consumer wants, needs, or means and possibilities. So I think those players who are able to capitalize on some of these emerging shifts and provide some of these experiences in the way that consumers are asking for them are going to be ahead of the curve. The other interesting thing perhaps to mention is in our most recent global automotive consumer study, we see that an astonishing 50% of US customers who are thinking about their next vehicle purchase are willing to try a different brand. Mm. Um, so wow. if you are uh, you know, uh, in, in an automotive brand, you need to, to really take this seriously, right? Because what are the drivers according to our consumers? Uh, one is simply to try something new. You know, um, the other one is affordability, a very close right. second. And then a third one, uh, access to new technology features that come with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the OEMs that solve for some of these uh, variables are going to be ahead of it. Yeah, that's great. Now, with these changing consumer trends, right, and how you want to own the vehicle, et cetera, can you actually walk us through a demo of how we will actually experience this and uh, understand a little bit detail about the offering? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, vehicle subscriptions we see as an alternative to traditional vehicle ownership. It is not a traditional lease and it is not your daily rental contract, but rather it's something in between that, first of all, um, contractually, the customer journey is a 10 minute, very streamlined process, as we will see. But secondly, it does allow the flexibility for the customer to try something new before making a huge commitment and have the flexibility of switching vehicles along the way. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, this is just a demo of, of you know, a, a platform that we are bringing to our clients to help them stand up some of these capabilities in a fraction of the time, the cost, and the risk. It is built in AWS technology, partially, and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, and it is very, very exciting, and we're seeing uh, you know, very increasing degrees of adoption and interest, especially with younger or uh, underserved, uh, you know, uh, demographics that, that, you know, need to have access to mobility in a convenient way. So, you know, very simple here. Um, you have, uh, first of all, you have to uh, identify with a phone number, right? You'll receive a text message and then you'll click on the link. Um, then what you are able to see, you can browse some of the vehicles Thanks. and the pricing that uh, you know the fleet owner could be an OEM, could be a captive, or could be an ind independent fleet owner has in their portfolio. So let's start. Let's think about this EV. It's interesting. I want to try it out. I want to see if it's for me or not. So I'm going to be able to browse the full specs. Right? What are the available colors? Uh, you know, the engine, the, the setting, etc. There's a full feature list. If you really want to geek out <laughs> and look at all of what you get with this vehicle, um, there you go. And then of course, um, you know, that allows you to make an informed decision. So let's say you think this is for you. Then mm -hmm. you need to think about how long do I wanna keep this vehicle, right? Am I only keeping it for a few months? Am I gonna keep it for a little bit more than a year? Because then you can adjust your monthly payment uh, based on your, uh, you know, needs and, and, and budget, right? But the other thing that's interesting is what's included. Uh, when you look at, you know, um, the maintenance, the uh, roadside assistance, uh, the, the insurance, you know, charging could eventually be included. You can bundle all the services so that, again, from a consumer perspective, everything is included. You know what your payment is going to be, and then there is no stress. It's all transparent. So let's say that you're ready to move forward. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go with this $850 a month option, right? And then I am going to um, complete my reservation. So 
I already saw what it has, etc. I'm going to then look at my payment. You can modify your start fee. You can look at your monthly mileage allowance as well. And then you have a full picture of your costs. Uh, what do you pay up front at drive off? So let's say that you say, this is for me. I want that. Uh, then you're going to look at your zip code to see the, the tax, et cetera. So now you're going to create your profile. Um, you're, you're going to scan a driver's license. Instead of entering all this painful data, this is just a scan front and back. You know, your license is processed, validated in the background. You can review your information. Uh, if this is you, then you're going to take a selfie to authenticate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, just to make sure that it's really a human, not a bot, all the, all the good things. So facial recognition, success. So now we have uh, a profile created for Heather in this case, and then we're gonna basically complete the reservation. You can once again review your details. Uh, in this case, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip it. And then you can confirm your reservation. You have an account number. You can view your entire contract details here. Um, everything was done digitally. There's not a single piece of paper involved. And the next step is you're gonna uh, add your color preferences. You know, in case the one you want is not there, number one and number two. Um, and then finally, you are going to confirm and now you are ready to go. So, um, you know, the next thing will be, you have to schedule a delivery or pickup and that could be done at your home or at a place of business, typically, Brick and mortar dealers already support some of the startups that do subscriptions, for example, so they can leverage that uh, infrastructure and, and provide an experience that is equally good when it comes to delivering the vehicle. And there we go. So that's just a quick demo of how this customer journey could look like in, in a subscription model. Yeah. No, this is fabulous. And uh, from my AWS perspective, we have been working with, the, with partners like yourself to really construct that frictionless journey Yes. And this is a very good example of this. It aligns so well with what we are talking about from a digital customer experience perspective with connected mobility and all the data that transpires between the car, which can be used for your insurance usage and so on. So really like a full story that comes alive with this offering. Absolutely. Super excited. I wish it was here already. My son could have uh, leveraged that to- I know, know right? <laughs> have a- let's, let's make it happen, Ajit. I mean, I think these are early days, um, yes. but our strategy uh, is aligned with where we see things going. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see that some clients are already piloting this technology, both new entrants and existing clients. So uh, we're super excited, Ajit, to, to work together with you and your team as well as we take this to market and we see yeah. more clients uh, embracing these models and, and yeah. driving it forward. No, absolutely. So on that front, Rodolfo, how do we get started? If somebody is super excited about this and to getting it going, how do we get started? How fast can they go at, uh, and make this happen? Great question. We are ready to go. We actually have a set of assets, accelerators to get started. So we're going to link up a, a QR code here, um, you know, at the end of this video. And then uh, please do reach out to us. Um, you know, we'd be more than happy to have conversations, help you shape your strategy, how to integrate it into your existing offerings if you have them, or build something that is standalone just to try it out. Uh, we have a lot of technology assets and great people to help you do that at a fraction of the time, the cost, and the risk. So please reach out and look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. Again, Rudolfo, thank you so much for coming on this episode of This Is My Offer and looking forward to working on really exciting solutions with Deloitte. Likewise, Ajit. Thank you so much for having me.